What do we know so far and what comes next? How does he fight extradition given that we know that the Bahamas has said that they would process that very quickly when it comes? Yes, we've really seen, um, you know, really great cooperation between the Bahamas and the U.S. government. So I would not expect that, you know, fighting the extradition would get him off the hook here. This is really um, a delay tactic. He can build his legal case while he this plays out in court. Uh, but the U.S. government is clearly very keen, uh, you know, multiple counts of both criminal and civil um, issues here. So this is really, uh, you know, could uh, draw out this case, but it is not likely to uh, to have it go away anytime soon. Uh, the, the thing that we're going to be really be looking for here uh, is, uh, you know, kind of what are his lawyers advising him? Do we hear him speak kind of with the same candor he has before? Um, and, and then, of course, you know, kind of on, on the U.S. side, uh, you know, uh, John J. Ray, he testified in the U.S. House today and basically said, look, we're trying to find money and get that money back to people, but this is going to be a very, very long slog. Laura, what does this mean for customers? I mean, are they going to see the money that they put in the FTX and when can they regain access to their accounts? So uh, that's a really good and, and complicated question. Uh, uh, John J. Ray III, who's the CEO that took off over after uh, Bankman Freed uh, resigned and went into bankruptcy, um, he said that they've uh, accessed about $1 billion or so, a little bit more than that, in assets. Uh, they're currently trying to, to trace all those and link them back to customer accounts. The good news is if you were a customer of the FTX.us uh, platform, you're more likely to get your money uh, more in full and sooner than um, the FTX.com platform. Uh, that that had a lot of money that went to Alameda Research, uh, and that money is, is uh, where there were huge losses. Um, what Ray said today is, you know, we're working on getting this money back, but we know there's going to be massive losses, and we're not going to be able to recoup all the money that was there, uh, you know, pre-bankruptcy. So much of this conversation is around the necessary regulation, right? What are we, uh, what are we gauging from how Congress wants to handle this? You really see two schools of thought, and this was really evident today um, during this hearing where Bankman Fried was supposed to testify, but of course he was arrested last night and, and was not able to uh, to te testify today, is that Republicans are saying, look, uh, Bankman Fried, he's a bad guy, he's a bad actor, but he's an outlier. You know, this doesn't mean that crypto is bad and we should really clamp down on crypto. Democrats are really taking a different approach, saying, look, Bankman Freed exemplifies what the industry is all about. You know, there are Ponzi schemes, there are frauds, there are, uh, you know, schemes to, to fleece people out of their money, and we should take a much he more heavy-handed approach. We're headed into divided government here in Washington next year. That, this is an area where there could be compromise, uh, but of course, just the, the facts are moving so much uh, more quickly than, than lawmakers are able to do so.